Let's go over to our man, Mr. Dave Mazza. Dave, folks, is the managing director, head of product development at Direction Shares. Of course, at Direction Shares, uh, there's plenty of us that trade the doubles, the triples. They have a lot more than that over at Direction Shares. But right now, we are going to be talking a few of the levered products. Dave, how you been? I've been well. Happy to be back. How are you? Uh, it's great to have you back. Is you know what? I'd like to start off where we were ending, and we were talking about the uh, the nugget and the dust. And what my question was, right? You know, you know what's so cool about the nugget and the dust that the gold market is so small that it seems that we have a lot of clients or we have a lot of listeners. Let's put it this way: that when they have a portfolio of gold, right, that they will go into that dust if they feel like, okay, we're going to take a hit because the gold market's so volatile, right? And, and switch back and forth. So my question is, is this, how does, the, you know, the inflows and outflows of your products, how do you handle those? Because I, you know, the gold market is so volatile. I mean, I love it. I'm just, but, I, but I'm trying to figure out how does, how do you handle that when I can tell how many calls we get here sometimes that, okay, man, everyone's on one side of the ship. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's a great point. Uh, for the majority of our products, especially with the gold miner side, we have both sides of the trade, if you will. So 3X bull and 3X bear. Uh, and really the way we manage these is quite simple. Uh, and that's why we can effectively deliver that daily total return. Yes. Uh, so we use total uh, an instrument called the total return swap. And all that really means, uh, it may sound complicated, but we just have counterparties, which are major, um, major investment banks that, uh, guarantee us um, for uh, collateral what is that amplified exposure. So if the, uh, an area goes up 1% and we have three times bull, you get the positive of that. And if it's bear, you get the negative of that. So um, the tools, allow, the, the, that instrument is highly fungible. And what I mean by that is it gives us great flexibility, but also allows investors um, and traders the certainty that if you're going to use it, both on the long side or, to your point, with dust as a hedge, you're going to get that on a daily basis. Yeah, which is really cool, man. I mean, because it's, it's so intriguing. And it seems that when I, when I look at that segment in general, I can understand it more just because there's so, only so many equities. Do you know what I'm saying? Versus when we're talking about the S&P, it's like, you know, you got to be a lot more sophisticated in the business in general. But it's pretty cool how that works. Let me ask you, when you are looking at a new product, how, how do you figure out, like, okay, we have a product that we think is going to come out in the future. I think we want, might, might want to do an ETF on it. And then how do you go from here's a product and then how do we get this in the marketplace? Yeah, so um, that's a really good point. You know, traditional product development for if, if we were managing – uh, a firm with primarily one X ETF. So it would, you know, look to, to capture big bucket items. You know, maybe I want dividend equities for income or I want uh, a basket, which is going to give me exposure to smart beta, low volatility, you know, these new themes that are emerging. But what we're thinking about on leverage and inverse ETFs, it's really about giving investors the tools that they need to make particular amplified views. So a great example is the products that we launched back um, uh, in line with the GIX uh, sector changes. And then yes. those who weren't familiar, the, uh, many companies that historically were just part of IT were pulled out of there, moved into communication services with the old telecoms, and really changed that sector and made it a really interesting one. And a few names moved to consumer discretionary, like your Amazon and Netflix. But either way, um, we, we never had a telecom uh, sector uh, bull and bear fund because, frankly, it's an area that didn't have a lot of volatility. Most people own telecom names and on an individual basis for income. But once that change occurred, it became a really interesting sector. So we launched two ETFs, uh, Talk and Mute, that give investors exposure to just that area uh, and just those companies that are now part of communication services. Uh, and that's really how we think about it is what opportunities do, do we see traders potentially needing or wanting in the future? both on the bull uh, and, of course, on the bear side, even though we've been in a, continue to be in a, a, a bull, uh, sure. long-term bull market. <laughs> sure. And, you know, when we talk volatility now, this is going to get interesting, folks, okay, because we have, uh, okay, October 30th. October 30th, right, we have the Fed coming on again. Yep. I know we're at 1.75 in the 10 right now. 
But when you look at the Fed fund futures rate, it's saying, hey, listen, man, this looks like it's an 89 percent percentile that we're going to go from 1.5 to 1.7. So, of course, you have the triples of either the 10 plus or the 20 plus yeah. uh, note and bond. So, I mean, I, I suspect we're going to get some action uh, as we come up to that uh, meeting on the 30th. Yeah, we've actually seen really, really interesting moves from investor uh, inflows and outflows into, uh, especially on the 20, uh, 20 plus year side. So that's TMF and TMV. And actually, this year, investors have moved into the bull side there, TMF, and moved out of uh, TMV. Uh, and I actually think that we're going to see more volume and more interest in those products heading into the meeting for two reasons. One is, to your point, we know we've begun to price in a rate cut. Um, so that's not going to be a surprise when we get to 25 basis points. But if we listen to what um, the chairman said, this is supposed to be another insurance cut. And guess what? Insurance cuts back in the 95 and 98 examples, you're done at three, right? Three to 75 basis points each time. Okay. But what if they come out and surprise us and do 50? Right. right. So you can be prepared for really, I think, either a dovish or hawkish move and both these tools on the bull and the bear side, you're going to want to look for those um, heading into that, that that event. So don't just focus on what's happening on the equity side, to your point. Let's look at what's happening in the Treasury markets. You know what's cool, Dave? Don't you think that I, what I've found is that so many more of us now, not even in the business, let's say we weren't in the business, that talking with friends outside, so many more people are now cognizant of the bond market and what, yeah. the, what the rate is because of like the mortgage rates, right? Yeah, normally, you know, you own treasury, you know, let's say if you're an investor or a trader, everyone's got some bonds, maybe uh, to dampen their volatility. If you move into uh, retirement phase, you need the income. But what's interesting is, you know, I had my mother asking about the yield curve the other day. Yes, my, you know, right. My mother ru ru uh, ran a, a deli in Massachusetts for 25 years. Uh, and now uh, and now works at a retirement home. Uh, but she's never heard of the yield curve, honestly. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. She should have never thought about it. But because um, there's been so much interest in it, frankly, over the summer with this will be the most predicted recession ever um, if it does come into fruition. Eventually it has to. Um, but frankly, the bond market and the Fed is moving stocks, I think, even more than we appreciate. We know it's a trade war. We know it's the headlines related to that. But at the end of the day, it's really what the ECB and what the Fed is going to do. And the ECB is coming up soon, too. So that's another you know, potential uh, move that we may see as the, you know, this 10-year move has been pretty rapid, going all the way from inverted now up to you know, 175. No. The, the, and what, what, what Dave's talking about, folks, it, it went from like an inverted to like steep like the last three weeks like in an incredible way. There's no doubt about it. it you know, it's amazing. To, it's amazing to me that we... Uh, well, we ha I'll have to pay attention to the bonds because that's what's running everything. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. You know. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure getting a great education off you. You have a great one. We'll find out what happens with the Fed the 30th. We will. And look forward to having you uh, two weeks from today. Thank you. Talk soon. Thanks, Dave. Have a great one. Have a safe one.